can be expected to give you just north of two dozen eggs daily. In order to do that, they have to have shelter, food, and water. But most importantly, they have to be alive and not eaten by the neighborhood dogs, possums, raccoons, owls, and other birds of prey. Let's take a look at our chicken arrangement here. What we used here was two 10 by 10 dog kennels. Put them together, which gave us a 10 by 30 run. And on that last 10 feet, we enclosed that entire space into a chicken coop. Now that does a real good job of keeping your large dogs and so forth out but you have to supplement more than that in a natural environment. As you can see here, we went back on the outside of this and put a welded wire weave on the outside of the chain link. You use steel wire, very inexpensive, to label it down. Then on the inside, we use poultry netting chicken wire on the inside. This will stop large creatures from going through, medium sized varmints from working their way through, and most small predators from getting through the chicken wire. But we still have to contend with the climbing varmints and the flying varmints. And for those, you can see what we used is a deer netting. Deer netting goes across the entire top. A few years ago when I first started using this, I was very skeptical about how good of a job it was ultimately going to wind up doing. But after untangling quite a few creatures from it, I can tell you that for whatever reason, Things that don't have thumbs have a real hard time getting through that, even though it's very easy for us to break. They wind up getting themselves all tangled up into it and just having a real mess. All right. You got two major deterrents for predators. That's light and sound. Uh, as you can see here, I wired this, got it on for your benefit here, with a fluorescent light energy savings and when you're electrifying your things you can see I've zip tied this cord up and I've completely waterproofed it from cord to cord with electrical tape the other one is sound all right well if you have small people helping you on your farm like we have here they're prone to leave gates open hey right on key, right? But if you'll notice here, this gate takes human strength to open and it auto closes. I'd like to claim some amazing robotic trick there. What I've done is use two zip cords, bungee cords. And the only reason I use two and so that if one fails or pops off, it's a double safety. Interlock it behind the chains where it locks onto the gate, and the same where you interlock them on your fence. For support across the top, I've got a two by four across each way, and a center beam all the way down. I use two five gallon waterers, again in the event that one waterer fails. Okay, ladies, I'm going to take a step inside your, your house here, if you don't mind. Or even if you do mind, actually. See, inside here, got a pretty good roof. Got a pitch to allow water to rain. Got lights in here. These are mostly for wintertime purposes, so I can maintain light to my birds to get them to lay throughout the winter. Two hanging feeders, so we don't have fight over food. There's another gate 
just like the one I came in here but I've got it closed and zip tied off it's not in use on the inside I've got those floors branched off with board on inside out and landscape timbers and again wherever my cords connect I've waterproofed them land box is very simple and there you go